media channel on YouTube I've been doing a lot of pieces on collage and using collage to set the scene or the background for a mixed media piece whether it be something like fun and silly like last week when I did the washi the funny girl in the washi tape or something more advanced and serious like when I did the scrapbooking background with the like elven snake charmer girl um, and sometimes and the reason I'm like hovering in this weird place in my house is because I <laughs> I'm inspired by just um, objects or things in my environment and in that way you can use paper or ephemera as a collage to inspire just the feeling of a piece so rather than using it just as decoration you can use it to inform the flavor or the mood of the entire piece so I was I just came home got my hair done my wrist done looking good and I came home and I'm looked at my little 1950s vintage record player that I have up because I'm a super weirdo like that. And I thought, gosh, that reminds me of like one of my favorite things to use for my mixed media projects, which is like vintage books, but also um, vintage dictionary pages. Also, a lot of people like to use ledgers, which is also really cool. There's a lot of things that you can use. So to, in today's project, I want to pick one of these vintage pieces of paper that I have and use it to inspire my background to do a vintage type piece. I have no idea what that's gonna be yet. I'm gonna just make it up as I go along. There are two methods in which to give instruction in this art, how to make wax flowers and fruit. This is not even a, um, <laughs> this is, basically this is the inside chunks of like a vintage magazine. Paper is perfect because it's super matte and I don't feel bad using it because it's basically garbage at this point. And yet, is it? It's like a treasure. I'm so using this. I was in the shower and I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do today because this is vintagey. We already had our kind of art deco font picked out. I have my distress stains and I'm like, what can I do that's vintagey? And then I'm like, dirt, you just published three art deco style books. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> these are the books that I published while we were like in first in lockdown. I mean, it took a few months obviously to get them done, but this was like the result of basically the COVID, when COVID hit, I went down a 1920s and 30s rabbit hole and I didn't come out for about five months. And guess what, my friends, I am not sorry. So today I'm gonna pick a project from my Learn to Draw Art Deco Style Volume One book and super excited, little sneak peek. Oh look, those are my grandmothers that are in there by the way. That's where that really is my grandmother's. There's my grandmother, Mary. We called her Gigi. That was Oma. So anyways, very cool, 1930s. So what we are gonna do today on this vintage collage background is I thought I would do one of the rings. There's jewelry in the back. And I thought it would be super cool. So I have my Art Deco, um, never been before used stamp set. And then we have our vintage paper that I picked out. And then I thought I could use this collage background and then I could do one of the rings on top and then stamp a quote that was like, I love bling in my ring or something stupid like that. But obviously this is just for fun. But since we have all the like flavors of the art deco-ness, vintage-ness, I thought, well, that would be perfect. Okay, and there's some faces too if you haven't actually seen the book before so I was looking at the rings so this is a rectangle so I thought if we could have the quote maybe at the top and then maybe like the ring at the bottom I don't even know what medium I think maybe some inks would be really cool or we could just like do a big ass ring in the center and then like forget the quote but I kind of like a quote although that's pretty big text so let's see, there's earrings in there too, but then you, a sh a one singular shoe would be really, really pretty as well. Oh man, but I really wanna use those stamps. Okay, so many choices. I think I am gonna do one of the rings. 
Okay, well, anyways, I'll figure out which one in a minute. Right now, I wanna focus on my mixed media vintage paper collage backgrounds. I am on a roll lately with these mixed media collage backgrounds. It's like once I had the topic in mind, now it's like I'm just every week I'm inspired to do a different one. Okay, like using a different background. Um, what I like about this paper is it it's really fragile. <laughs> and I don't think I want the big images in here. I think it might be a little distracting. So I'm going to just actually put that away and just use the text part. I'm going to use matte medium. You can use matte gel. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to end up using my inks. I'm going to give it a try. Oh my God, look at that. That's so funny. So um, we've been talking a lot lately about the different collage backgrounds and the difference between matte medium and Mod Podge. I'm not going to use Mod Podge because I want to put, I want to make sure this is really well glued down. You can use a can, like a regular canvas. I just, these wood boards. I like to, when I'm doing a collage background, I prefer to do it on a really hard substrate, like a, a canvas panel board or wood. I do do them on canvases too, but if I do have like a choice and I have it around, I'm pretty lazy and I usually just use like whatever I have around, but I do like a hard surface. It make, just makes it actually a lot easier to collage off of because there's no spring. If you have like a pre-stretch canvas, you know, it, there's, sometimes it's really springy and then it's actually hard to get um, your thing, your backgrounds to adhere because it's so springy. So I just very purposefully use the corner pieces of the pa whatever paper I'm using and to write in the corner of my surface. It makes it really easy. Makes everybody happy. And again, I always use copious amounts of my adhesive material, both on top and under. Remember, biggest mistake people do is they don't use enough. That's the best way to get bubbles and wrinkles and look, is just not, you're just not using enough, which is a really, really easy problem to solve, right? So no worries, just use more than you're comfortable with and that's the perfect amount. All right, so we're gonna put lots and lots under here, nice and juicy. Um, I also love this, so I, when I'm done doing this, I'm just gonna use my hair dryer to dry it. No need to wait overnight. I'm like, who ain't got time for that? Okay. Yeah, I don't love the dark prints. And again, this was destined for the garbage. Like this doesn't even have, um, this doesn't even have a cover on it. I don't even know where this is from. It's so fragile and old. So it's great for collaging, vintage, anything, magazines, as long as it's matte. And usually if it's old timey, <laughs> it will be that. Um, it makes great super absorbance, very lightweight. And it's amazing for collage mixed media collage backgrounds. So it's the, literally the perfect, the perfect background material. So yeah, what have we done so far on this channel? I've done a lot, a few scrapbooking backgrounds. We've done a few scrapbooking projects where that became the foreground. I did a puppy project. I did, um, we had, you had the body template I gave it. Ooh. Oh no, maybe I should do that today. You guys know what I'm talking about? Let me see, here's the puppy one that I did. That video actually did not do well, which I was pretty surprised. And then this is the body template that I gave out. So that's all done with scrapbook paper. So doing a lot with paper on this channel. Um, I kind of want it just to be text. See, and it's like, I think this is dried. I'm actually gonna go ahead and add more right on the side. Remember, use too much rather than too little. So if I was going to be using 
acrylic paint on top. Now I'm debating if I shouldn't do something with that girl. Um, then, I if there's a pencil there. Then I would use gesso. You wouldn't have to because you can just put, you can paint with acrylics on top of matte medium because it's specifically formulated to work with acrylic paint. So that would be fine. But if you wanted to like lighten up this middle part, say, you would definitely want to, um, ooh, that's cool. Just getting kind of a rough chunk here. Sorry, I can't talk in glue apparently. <laughs> oh, but since I'm gonna be doing, I think I'm gonna be doing inks or watercolors, um, then what you really want to use is absorbent ground. And you can remember that by just thinking of it as gesso is, is prep for acrylics and absorbent ground is really surface prep for watercolors. So what's the difference? Well, gesso, um, acrylics don't need an absorbent surface. They are, they dry themselves to like a plastic so they can, they can go on a non-porous surface pretty well. But watercolors and ink really need something that they can like soak into. They really need a porous surface. And um, absorbent ground does exactly that. It makes whatever surface you're working on absorbent so that you can use watercolors and inks. Oh, I love that fancy is right in the middle. I didn't even do that on purpose. All right, so now I will take my hair dryer. I have this one tiny stupid peak hole. I gotta get it down. Take my hair dryer and really dry this like super duper well. And then we'll talk about step two, which is gonna be putting down the absorbent ground so that I can it can accept the mediums that I'm gonna put on top. And really, really super quick, um, anytime you have these bubbles coming up is anywhere you didn't use enough adhesive, okay? So sometimes you can get in there while it's still semi-damp and really push down. And this is why I love working not on pre-stretched canvas because you can really like put some pressure down and get rid of these um, if they're bothering you. I don't care too much. They're really, really subtle. Like I can't see any of them, but if that's bothering you, you can really press them out thanks to your wood surface. All right, this is mostly dry. So um, I'm gonna use, again, absorbent ground because I think I'm gonna use inks on this and they work better. You can use gesso, do not get me wrong, but if you want, like if you're using watercolors and inks and you want them to behave predictably as watercolors and inks, you use absorbent ground over gesso because gesso creates a, um, a slick surface that doesn't, they don't absorb into. So you can use it, they'll stick. It just behaviorally changes. Um, so I prefer absorbent ground. You can also get wa um, watercolor ground by Daniel Smith. I don't like it, however. Um, I, yeah, I don't like it. I really prefer just Golden's classic absorbent ground. So. Again, we're gonna have the ring, I believe I'm gonna draw it like this way, and then the quote is gonna be here, and then I think I'm gonna do something to kind of like distress or fade the edges. So I don't want like it to be white, but this, um, this acts, it says it's opaque acrylic primer for water, me water medium, but it's not, oh my gosh, Maggie, don't eat my art journal, pie. Oh, Maggie, that's what I get for leaving my art journal on the floor. I was photographing it and she ate the bombs off Maggie. No, that's my fault. All right, so I don't want, oh my gosh, Distracto Doggy. What are you doing? Oh, Maggie, go hit one of your bones. Go hit a bone, where's your bone? So I don't want this to be like white, right? I want it to have enough kind of, 
down where I can do the art and it'll stand out from this. So I just want like a really light coat. So I'm going to put it on very thinly. But then also we can also like do things to like knock it back if it becomes too opaque or too white, we can always just go back and like distress it. So I'm gonna kind of just go slowly just so I can see what it looks like. Never done this project before, it's exciting. So I'm just brushing it on super lightly. And it's, I use it the same exact way that I use gesso. I'm trying to remember why I didn't like the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. I literally can't remember. I just remember I was like, I am not using this and I am mad that I bought it. It's a really long time ago and I can't remember it was the consistency where I had to use like a million coats to make, I can't remember what it was. I'm, that's really lame, but I really don't. Oh my gosh. Dog is trying to play with my cats. And they're like, um, I'm all set with that, thanks. All right, so this is like layer one. See, and we already, there is already the matte medium down too, so it's like, it, we can paint however we want, whenever we want, um, and it will work. I'm just trying to figure out how much I want this to look you know, white and how much I don't. And is it white enough as like a background? So I'll dry it with my hair dryer and that will set what the color, what, what it's gonna look like and then go from there. All right, I just found a really good quote. That's life won't sparkle unless you do. I love that. And I'm thinking like, I'm not sure if this is a white enough background that my bling is gonna stand out. So I'm adding just a little bit more to where I think like the main part of the ring or necklace is gonna go like here so that at least that stands out, you know? So I'm just gonna do it right like in the center where I'm gonna aim for that here. And then the quote I think is gonna be fine up here. But just in case, I'm just adding a little bit more. And again, this isn't for absorbency purposes because I can stamp on here fine. It's actually just so that you can see it better. And then for this case, you could actually just use straight up gesso, but I already have this out anyways. You could also, if you don't have either product, just use like acrylic paint and just using, just use it sparingly and you would be fine. All right. So that's fine i need to decide on a project i think i think i actually might do one of the necklaces you could also turn any of the rings into a necklace but i think maybe something like that where it's like dangling here and then like the i love doing the chains the chains could be kind of like you know looping around or maybe do the necklace pendant part and then the stamp and then we'll do the chain around oh yeah i like that we're gonna do that okay okay and the circle one is easy although that one is actually super easy too i'm obsessed with the rings though well maybe this will become like a little jewelry series or something how do you even choose which one all right let's get started oh my god i'm such a nerd you know what i thought i've just had like a super idea burst like you could even use punches look at this you could do punches and like punch out i'm just saying how, oh if you didn't want to draw or you didn't feel comfortable drawing you could get really creative uh, by doing you could glue these down i would be here all day right and then draw on top but that would be really fun. Oh my gosh, we could also bedazzle this for reals. Oh, oh, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, so I used to teach kids forever, so I have a lot of like bling buckets. So just saying, if you're doing this with a child, your grandchild, your daughter, you could totally do this. Oh my gosh, you guys, how much would they love this? and put like the rhinestones all around it and then stamp a quote. Like, are you kidding? Should I just do it? Then you don't even need to draw. 
So if you're bad at drawing, ka-ching. See, this is why I separated my drawing channel from my mixed media channel, because just because you like to do mixed media doesn't necessarily mean that you like to draw. Oh man, this was literally right next to me on the floor. I didn't even know it. <gasps> I think I might have to do this. So freaking fun. Oh my gosh. I didn't even need to absorb and ground anything. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm like so excited, but it'd be fun to draw even around it to kind of give it some more like make it. I told you I didn't know where this project was going. Ooh, the green is really pretty. Ooh, and we got these to go with, although they're kind of clashy. <gasps> what? I feel like I'm eight right now and I'm not sorry. Oh my gosh. Seriously, if this is if you're doing this project with your grandchild, they would be freaking out right now, right? But little girl doesn't love some bling, bling, bling. For that matter, what big girl doesn't like some bling, bling too? Oh, the purple. Oh my gosh, we could do like, Purple and green would be way gaudy. How fun. All right, I'm going to be here for a hot minute deciding what to do. I am so five years old right now. Yes. 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 Oh, look at the like hot, obnoxious pink ones. Although, although, if we keep it in the kind of gold category, we could maybe make it. Oh my god, I'm so overwhelmed with possibilities. <gasps> that one's really pretty. I was going to say and tasteful, but really anytime you're introducing actual bling to your project, you're pretty much throwing tasteful right out the window. <laughs> oh, it's so stinking fun. Look how little, look at these little baby ones. I've never even used these before. Oh my. We could totally, it would be cute to have it like off center, like dribbling it around with a quote. All right, this changes everything. I'm gonna do the quote first and then do the necklace and then figure out the little blah, blah, blah around it. Yes. See, and this is a great way too, we can have a book. Um, and this is why I'm obsessed with hoarding art books as well as making art, art books because you, you can draw inspiration from them and lessons from them in so many different ways, right? We could do it literally, or we could take that and g run with the whole idea. Oh, it's just magical. All right, I'm gonna get my stamps out right now. And that quote was, what was that quote? I feel like it's Christmas right now. Life won't sparkle unless you do. Okay, get these out. All right, let's get our stampingness on. Um, here goes nothing. I'm not even gonna lay it out, I'm just gonna go. I don't think I've ever once in my whole life laid out stamps. <laughs> I just go. Life, oh, except I don't, these are kind of cheesy because they, um, well, that's annoying. Where's the F? Because they're like not glued on properly. So this is what you get for getting cheap stamps at Michael's. Damn it, damn you, Michaels. Um, where's the F? They're not glued well, so the corners stick out more than the center, so you have to see. <gasps> where's my F? Oh, it's in the packaging still. That's annoying. Yeah, that stinks. Oh well. My favorite philosophy. Oh well. Life. You can't even read that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another sign. won't and then sparkle unless um, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to limit the use of these stamps I don't know if this is a number O or if this is a letter huh I'm gonna limit the number of stamps to just a couple of words since I didn't realize it was gonna be crappy. Unless you do. All right, so don't buy the cheap sets. <laughs> Life, all right, here we go. Won't, ah, ah, I can't get it out. Ooh. 
won't. I like wonky stamps. I like it when they come out wonky. Maybe sparkle. We, I can handwrite sparkle. Sparkle. And then we'll put unless above it. Put it like here. Um, less. Nothing more boring than watching somebody stamp. I'm going as fast as I possibly can. Unless you. And then we'll do the do down here, unless you do. All right, see, that way we limit the crappy. <clears throat> I'll put an exclamation point there. Boop. Thank you, stamps. That'll be all for today. Right, put these in another container. This stamp is so cheap, they don't even come in their own container, which is lame. Okay, I'm so excited. All right, so I need to come up with a fun way to do sparkle. And then we'll have the necklace. So I need to do sparkle first here. I will just, I'm gonna super lightly, um, if I was a really professional, I would like, I'm just gonna make up a super girly font. Um, my handwriting is terrible. Spark. Cool, unless you do. It's pretty, it's pretty pathetic. Um, but that's okay. I don't think you can even erase. Spark, yeah, we can do this. Spark, I feel like the A should be up here. Oh well, we'll do the, we'll bring the K up to fill in that space. We'll just be super ridiculous with it. Sparkle, unless you do, okay, done. And then we're gonna put our little, fun little whatever it's gonna look like around. Do, 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 do. We'll do the little, you know, chain. I can't think of the word. I am so overly excited to get my bling out. You have no idea. I'm gonna be here all day. I need to go off camera and make some hard jewelry decisions. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm really hooked on this green one. <laughs> So I'm going for it. So I'm gonna just really loosely like um, pretend there's like the top is here. Right, it looks, it's gotta look natural. So it's kind of like laying down like that. So it looks strewn, thank you so much. And then I think I may put some blue bedazzles around it. I am so excited. So, yeah, I really like these blue ones. This one will be like, you know, how it's like cash, kind of standing off there. And then we can put, I mean, we can go big or go home on this sucker. We could have this one at the top. These already even have the sticks. Ooh, 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 ooh because this was really popular back then, where we had the like long chains. And you know, I learned a lot during that book, which was, I can't believe I'm bedazzling, I'm so happy right now. Um, was I learned there was like all these names for all the necklaces, I had no idea. <gasps> Stop it, guys. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. That way it's not like super cheesy overboard. I'm really tempted to put like tiny little blue ones all the way around, but I might leave it like that. It's a little bit precious and less like, you know, sometimes less is more. That's all I'm saying. But maybe I need to put like a sparkle like up in the actual word sparkle as well. Too bad there's no eye. I could use it like sparkle, like have it with something like that. Oh my God, it's so fun. And then I had all these big plans. <laughs> to do like inking, but now I'm just like, screw that. Let's just do something really easy and even more easy and more fun, which is doing, I wonder if this will show up. 
You can even, oh, I don't think that's going to show up. <clears throat> hmm. I wonder if we should do black. I'm trying to do this as like the little, you know, strand. I guess I could do this first and then go in with the black. We'll see how it goes. I already started now. So we have, I'm just going along my pencil line. Doing polka dots. Do, 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 do. I can't, it's not real. I didn't even, I haven't even glued down my main jewel yet. Too, I'm too excited. Yeah, I, it's not, you're not going to see it. So I'll probably have to do this all over again. But since I already started, I have to kind of commit for a hot second. So excited. You guys, this would be so fun to gift to like a granddaughter or your daughter, right? Or you could make this project. <gasps> you could do this as like a kit for Christmas. You just package up like the little jewels or get like a little container, right? And like a little pack of wooden um, canvases <gasps> and some stamps. You guys, this would be the best little Chris. You cannot see that in any way, shape, or form. So I'm gonna have to <laughs> redo that. All right, let me dry that. We need to. We need to go take two for the necklace. I think to highlight the chain. What I'm gonna do is every few strands. I'm gonna put like this here, so you can like follow the chain. Please don't run out. Please don't run out as it goes, you know, along it's, oh gosh, I don't have very many of these. So I should have done a little inventory before I started gluing as usual. I <laughs> wing everything. Oh no, I think we'll be okay. So here we can, yes, just, oh gosh. Perfect. I have like four left. So this way you're highlighting the chain. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have the, I literally have the perfect amount. I'm gonna make that a little bit longer. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Oh yes, darling. It's just so beautiful. Now I need to figure out if I'm gonna do that in like a pink or do we keep it super classy and have the sparkle be like the color green so it's like really matchy matchy and I'm going to use my glue gun to god I'm so slow glue down the master pendant piece like that done thank you glue gun thank you you could even put jewels in like the corners oh my god okay let me just tell you from my experience of teaching children this was so funny when I used to, I used to teach girls from like age five to like mostly age 12, 13. And I would have these big things of jewels out for the parties and I would look around <laughs> and the girls all were doing this. They would be like molesting and massaging their hands in the bling. And I would be like, mm-hmm, sister. Girls are born with the love of bling. It was just hilarious to see them like, massage like always their hands would just be in the whole bin just <laughs> like dreaming about jewels so funny um okay i need to make a decision i wish i was live right now so i could get your feedback on how you think i should do sparkle i could paint it with a paintbrush i could do it with a pit pen i could do it with um a paint pen as well which would be really really opaque I cannot decide. I'm just so gleefully excited about my little blingy necklace. Um, I really need to figure my chenizzle out. Oh, I wish you guys were here to help me. Or we could do it with like a, like a metallic, you know? Cause then that would be even sparkly. Oh man, you guys. Oh, maybe this like gold. I feel like it's just not gonna show up because the, um, because, yeah, because I'm just afraid. Well, I'm going now. Look at me go. 
Enough chatterboxing, Karen. Just get her done. And that way it's sort of blingy still, right? Oh. Oh, that's cute. Except maybe I should make these gold. Because then it would match. Oh, and you can see it. There we go. It's coming together now. All right, so we're going to change the necklace to gold and then it will match. Oh, here, look at this. We even have the clasp on this end. And then it'll match the word sparkle. art just the most fun thing I feel bad for everyone who doesn't understand why art is so fun it is so fun this is like pure pleasure assignment right now so cute I wish I had like a my nieces are all too old now. They'd be like, lame. But like, if this was for, you know, a little munchkin who still appreciated it. So here I'm gonna make these really ridiculous letters. Totally ridiculoso. ridiculous I love it all right then of course it's you know old timey so we have to do some distressing so I'm using just a stamp pad to just distress stain it Oh wait, and then it kind of matches the sparkly color as well. Oh my. And look at that, all started by looking at my vintage record player. And look where that led. You never know, you never know where your brain is gonna go. At least I never know where my brain is gonna go. All right, I'm just going to punch up the, um, the writing that got, like, my stamp. That was kind of poopy, poopy quality stamps. Just kind of, so you can read it a little bit. And Lord knows, with the sparkle part, I mean, you can really, oops, I just went out of the line. You can do so much. You can put bling all around the sparkle letters, right? We can add blue to like, oh, see, there's these little teeny tiny nuggets. We can put that up in our sparkle. I mean, why not? Ah, yes. Look at these, they're so tiny. But we can drop those in anywhere we want to. We don't want to overdo it, or do we? <laughs> or do we? That's the question. I want to give the, actually, I actually know who I think I'm going to give it to. I can already tell. All right, so Donna Lyon, if you're watching, Donna Lyon is a. I, she was one of my very first students I ever had at Awesome Art School. She started with me in 2016, and today she is one of my biggest supporters and contributors to my content and over on Patreon, and I owe her a debt of gratitude. And she has a granddaughter, yes she does, 
who is, I believe she is six. And I bet you she would appreciate this very much. So I'm going to gift this to Donna. Turn for all of her support that she has shown me throughout the years and give back some love. Now I'm gonna, this is just my blendy stick. That's kind of dirty. Oh yes. And we're giving this necklace a bit of a shadow line so it kind of helps it look like it's coming off the paper a little bit. At least that's my hope. As if it's, you know, so blinged out. Oh, it does. Kind of works. Just making this up as I go, <laughs> literally. <laughs> All right, my darlings. Life won't sparkle unless you do. Um, I am obsessed. I'm so happy with this little project. I had no idea where that was going. And I'm so, so glad that we ended up here. Donna Lyon, this is for you. Give this to Avery. Oh my gosh. Thanks for crafting with me today, ladies. I hope you enjoy this sparkly little fun projects as much as I did, because I so did. Such an unexpected little fun playtime we just had. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again next Friday for more unexpected things using collage backgrounds for your mixed media projects.